Have you seen the prices for new MacBooks these days? Getting the latest and greatest from Apple certainly leaves a big dent in the old wallet. You've got $2,400 MacBook Pro 16s. That's like a mortgage payment. And at best, you are looking for $999 options from their smallest, least expensive laptop, the M1 MacBook Air. That's like a car payment. So can we actually find a cheap, yet decently functional MacBook to save us all some money? And spoilers, inside this box is the cheapest MacBook Air, and I think it will fit the bill. And while we're finding out, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. <laughs> but actually, welcome to past, Gary, uh, because we've got to reverse ourselves in time just a little bit to actually find a deal that we want to buy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we got it. An 11-inch MacBook Air from 2013. It says 2013. I have a feeling that when we get it, though, it's going to be 2014. So we got to believe we spent, what, like 20 extra bucks so that we could upgrade it a little bit more and it would get a little bit more longevity. So add to cart. No thanks for laptop protection. And let's buy it. Well, I really, I really just hope that this is not a box of ball bearings. Here it is. This box is way smaller than I expected, but I do believe the battery sticker is a good sign. At least it's a box full of battery powered ball bearings, if nothing else. Do they make battery powered ball bearings? I'm nervous that it's just not gonna work at all. Uh, sometimes you buy stuff on Amazon and it shows up and it's just what, like a box of rocks. But look, we got an Apple logo. It says MacBook Air 11 inch, 128 gigabytes of storage, four gigabytes RAM, 1.4 gigahertz core i5, and it's silver. It looks like it's gonna be great. We just need the darn thing to turn on. It needs to turn on and work. You know, I always get nervous um, when buying this kind of stuff that I'm getting scammed. Okay, it also comes with a charger with the original MagSafe. Look at how small that charger is comparatively. What is the wattage here? This is a 45 watt MagSafe 2 power adapter. Look at how small this MacBook Air is. Uh, I thought my M1 MacBook Air was tiny, but as an 11 inch model, this is so much smaller. I mean, I guess it does have some bumps, some scuffs. It is definitely not pristine, uh, but it's, you know, it's been used in life. So hopefully it's not too beaten up right there. There's a pretty big gash to the plastic here. Uh, we've got Thunderbolt 1 and USB-A and USB-A headphone jack and MagSafe. Look, because of the USB-A and the Thunderbolt 1, I think this is actually gonna be a fantastic like work computer if it actually functions. Ooh, the hinge. Okay, the hinge is a little loose. We might be able to fix that a little bit um, here in the future, but this looks so good. It's shocking to me just like how much of a normal MacBook Air this looks like. The key, this is before they did the old butterfly keyboard fiasco. So Apple did really good keys, bad keys, really good keys. So it's a, we were able to thread that needle and get a really good keyboard in here. Look at the trackpad. It looks so nice right now, but if you compare it to like a regular trackpad from a MacBook today, it looks tiny. It's almost like a reasonably sized trackpad. The screen, wow, we complain about bezels today. Look at these bezels. That's like a solid three quarters of an inch of bezel right there. MacBook Air. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Does it actually turn on? Please turn on. Please turn on. The logo's on. It is illuminated, so it's getting power. Maybe we just need, maybe we're getting too excited. We're so used to the blazing speed of the M1. Let's see. Let's just give it a second. You take, hey, you take your time, MacBook Air. We're, you know, we're here for you. I'm going to plug it in, though. Who knows what kind of battery life this thing has. The Apple logo, as the second I stood up, the Apple logo turned on. Okay, so it is, it's functional, it works. Oh, okay, it is, it's on. Uh, we got the cursor, it's booting up. Okay, we are in United States. We have a United States keyboard. So it gave us an error that it would not set up iCloud right now. We'll try back again in just a little bit. Setting up the Mac. We may not have iCloud, but let's see if the Mac itself will work. I am, come on please work. For the price I paid for this, what, like 180 bucks? I think this could actually be a useful home computer. Okay, Mac OS Sierra, not Catalina. Okay, I remember this, and then it goes High Sierra, if I remember correctly. We have the 11 inch, early 2014. Uh, that's important. The reason I bought this specific model is what was the mid 2013s and the 2014s can be upgraded to Big Sur, which is my favorite operating system that Apple's done thus far. So we got the 1.4 gigahertz Intel Core i5, four gigabytes DDR3 RAM, uh, Intel HD graphics, which should be actually pretty good too. Displays, built-in display. This is before the time of Retina for the MacBook Air. We have that 120 gigabytes, okay. Finder works, desktop. What I like most about these older um, systems for Mac is, did you see the notifications? It's so much easier to mess with the notifications when they have those big blocks like turn off, 
decline instead of how it is now where you gotta like find that teeny tiny little X. So hooray, it actually showed up and it turns on, but we are not yet out of the woods, my friends. From my research, upgrading to Big Sur has bricked some of these older machines. My dread apparently does not get to get any better until we've actually fully recorded this video. Thanks to today's sponsor, Squarespace, you can create your own very beautiful website. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a professional website, online store, or portfolio. It's easy to claim a domain slash URL, create a custom site that matches your style, and bring your ideas to life. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, Head over to squarespace.com slash everyday dad to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. <laughs> but before we potentially brick this machine, I want to check out how well does this teeny tiny MacBook Air work as somebody's actual home desktop computer in 2022. I've said this for years now that power in these new MacBooks doesn't really matter because we've had all the power we've needed since the dual core days. Well, Gary, let's put your words where your mouth is and put this to the test. And yes. That sounded way better in my head. Because this thing has an older Thunderbolt 1 port, we did have to buy a little adapter to get this to plug in to HDMI, but it should have no problems once we get plugged into my display here. So let's see here. Plug in Thunderbolt 1, put you over here. We plug in HDMI. Okay, here we go, we got everything plugged in, and because it has the magic that is USB-A, it should just work with all my regular accessories because those are still, to this day, USB-A. Oh, there we go! Check that out, can you all can you all see that? Ah, it, looks, it works great. Okay, let's move everything over to the big display. Now, one of the things, let's quickly set up the displays, and it still has spotlight search, how cool is that? So, the one thing um, that I already can tell is gonna be a problem is if you are gonna use an external display, we are capped at 24 hertz, which yes, that's very cinematic. If we are going to be watching a movie, most movies are shot in 24 frames per second. But if we're doing gaming or anything like that, 24 frames per second is like what Zelda Ocarina of Time was in on the Nintendo 64. So you can absolutely tell there is a bit of choppiness. The laptop screen looks fine, um, but if you are gonna use an external display, it is, uh, it's gonna be a little choppier, but if you're trying to save some money, who really cares about chop? So let's sign in. Let's see if we can get a little bit of work done while we're sitting here. So this version of Safari is no longer supported. Well, it looks like you're working right now, um, Google Docs. So new window, we'll keep this going. Like let's do, I don't know, let's go to YouTube. Let's have a YouTube video playing um, down here at the bottom just so we can kind of see how it'll work here when something else is going on. So let's watch one of my favorite videos from Mr. Everyday Dad himself. Test, test, test. Looks like we could get some serious word processing done even if we have a 4K YouTube video playing in a different screen. Okay, so hey, I think this would work really well if you just wanted to plug it into a few accessories that you already had. That is incredible. Even though this computer is super small and it doesn't have the latest ports, it doesn't even have a USB Type-C port. It has enough USB-A to be pretty easy to set up at a desk. Plus, like we can see here, it's got the ability for one external display at up to 2560 by 1600 pixels, which is in a very usable 16 by 10 resolution. You can see here that we're missing out on a little bit of this because it is 16 by 10, it's not 16 by nine like this monitor. So you can see the bars right here. I'm legitimately impressed by this, but hey, while we've got this here, let's see how well it would work uh, to take meetings from. So let's see how the, uh, the built-in camera looks. Record, okay, so here we are on the included camera on the 11 inch MacBook Air. Now this is a 720p camera, which if you have been keeping up with Apple computers, they only very recently upgraded from this with what, like the MacBook Pro 16, the MacBook Pro 14, and the M1 iMac. Besides that, this is the same kind of image quality that you would get from any of the Intel high-end MacBooks. So let's see how this looks. Let's see how this sounds. Uh, on the screen here, not looking great. Um, Apple 720p camera has never been the best camera in the world, but I think this is totally usable uh, if you were gonna take meetings from this MacBook, say you're on Teams, say you're on Discord, anything like that. Um, I think this has been a shockingly easy working from home computer to set up both in that you can tie in easily to a keyboard, mouse, and display, and that you can take your meetings just from this computer. That's so great. Okay, well, we can't put it off any longer if we wanna actually benchmark this thing. So let's upgrade this 
to Mac OS Big Sur. Now again, that is my favorite operating system that Apple's ever produced, and we can still do that on a 2014 MacBook Air. Some Macs will not be able to get like the latest operating system, which is Monterey, um, but you still can get better than what you currently have. You can't just click on software updates and expect to get the specific version you want. So what I did is I Googled, can I get older versions of Mac OS? And that will take you to the Apple support page of how to get older versions of Mac OS. All you have to do is check and make sure that you've got the correct compatibility with your machine. You can make a backup if you want to. Then you use Safari to download Mac OS on your Mac. Now what this actually does is it will open up the App Store when you click on it and it will bring you to that specific installer. It won't let you download it. Uh, maybe there's a way to do it that I haven't been able to find, but this is the way that I've been doing it. So open Mac OS Big Sur installer continue. Besides turning it on and having it just be a brick, this is the part of the video that I've been really afraid about because I have seen so much online about Big Sur bricking a lot of these old Macs. So everybody out there, everybody, let's all come together. Let's all cross our fingers. Let's just send positive energy straight into the MacBook Air that this update actually works. Um, because I really like Big Sur and I really want this computer to be running on it, but I also don't want it to get bricked. So here we go with about two hours and 19 minutes remaining. Dang. All right, well, I guess we're settling in for the long haul. Okay, so we made it off the installer page. We are going one step at a time, and it looks like this is actually going to happen. I'm getting pretty darn excited that I'm going to be able to actually use this MacBook Air, so I've got to step out for a little bit, so hopefully by the time I get back, this will be fully ready to go uh, with Big Sur. Okay, just walked back in the door from taking my son to trumpet practice, and we came back, and we are now on mac os big sur uh for the macbook air that's so i love it i was really really scared that i was going to have problems with big sur or that it was going to lock the whole macbook air this is incredible so we have one of the most modern operating systems now running on the 2014 macbook air mac os big sur version 11.6.6 .6. okay so now let's get some benchmarks in and see just how powerful how far we can push this macbook air okay back to the work desk we've got the macbook air in a somewhat stable condition so let's run it through a few benchmarks just to see how actually powerful this thing is. So first off, you can see here, we've got the standard CPU tester that I normally use here. This is called Cinebench R23. I do have the previous scores up, then we'll compare the two just to see what we can get. So ready, set, go. We'll start off with the multi-core performance because that's where when you do a multi-core test, when you see those big numbers, like these big numbers compared to these big numbers, that's multi-core. We only have a dual core processor inside of this thing. So I imagine the multi-core score not going to be great. For example, the M1 MacBook Air has an 8-core processor. 737 for a multi-core score. That's very, very low. I don't know that I've ever gotten that low of a score on a processor before. But again, this isn't, it's a MacBook Air from 2014. If you're buying this for power, I would say maybe you have the wrong understanding of what this computer can do. Let's run one more very important benchmark to see if this could be used as maybe a mobile gaming platform. Now, the game that I play pretty much more often than anything else is World of Warcraft. Can you World of Warcraft on the 2014 MacBook Air? Just remember, uh, this will be in 24 frames per second because that's all it is limited to for external displays. But let's just see if it'll even run in like a usable level. Uh, I'm actually, I'm pretty excited to see this. I remember playing World of Warcraft way back in the day on like a tiny little netbook. And this was what back in like 2009, 2010. So I would imagine even an older MacBook Air from four years after that should be able to run it at, you know, if I drop the settings down all the way, um, I would hope that it would be in a playable state. Can we heal a dungeon and maintain a stable 24 frames per second? This would have the power to then say, hey, yeah, I can do it if you weren't on a monitor. Looks like we're able to get all of our healing spells off uh, pretty easily, so I think we're going to be able to do it. Oh, and this is one of my favorite ones, too. Okay. Turn the game. Where is it? We are dipping on the frame rate a little bit. And 
and it crashed. Not a great sign, um, but it was, as you saw um, when we were playing on the uh, the big monitor, it was able to play at least at 24 frames per second for an external monitor. I imagine it would do even better just playing on the uh, regular monitor. Look, real talk, I am very impressed with this laptop. I cannot believe the value we've gotten today for $186. I think you could legitimately use this laptop for checking email, word processing, taking notes, browsing the internet, all sorts of regular day things that regular people do. And it costs almost nothing, weighs almost nothing, and because it's an 11 inch laptop, it will fit in the same darn places that an iPad Air would go. No, I wouldn't get this for power tasks, but not everybody needs to do power tasks, right? And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button and go check out this video right here where we build a full Apple ecosystem for 500 bucks. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.